Welcome to Scanner School. It's finally here. The day has come. I have my hands on a Uniden SDS 100. This is the brand new radio from Uniden. I've had it now for less than a week as I record this, and we're going to go through it from top to bottom really quick as a initial review coming up right now on the Scanner School podcast. Welcome to the Scanner School, a podcast dedicated to the scanner radio hobby. Class is about to begin. Here is your host, Phil Lichtenberger. All right, thanks for joining us today for Scanner School session number 25. That's right, 25 episodes right now in the bag for Scanner School. We are on our sixth month right now. I want to thank all of you who have been listening to us from the beginning. For those of you who had just joined us uh, in the last week or this week, my name is Phil Lichtenberger. My amateur radio call sign is W2LIE, and this is Scanner School. We teach you everything that you need to know about the scanner radio hobby. This is a podcast. We break it down. We keep it easy, uh, very simple to digest. We don't try to go over your head, and uh, most importantly, we try and have a little bit of fun here and, and teach you guys what's going on and where the topic is at hand. So let me back up one week because there's something very important I need to remind you of. So last week, we had Eric Carlson on from FlightAware.com. Eric was nice enough to give away a couple of Pi Aware dongles and some hardware. But in order to qualify for that, you'd have to leave your comments in the show notes for the podcast. So go to scannerschool.com slash session 24 and leave your comments about the podcast uh, in, in the show notes there. So again, it's scannerschool.com slash session 24. The window to get your name in expires June 19th. Okay, that's a week from the day that this podcast airs. So June 19th is your deadline. So again, if you're not familiar with what we talked about last week, we talked about ADSB, which is basically monitoring the aircraft beaconing, and uh, you'll be able to plot them on your own personal map. Basically, it's a virtual radar, radar, and you can then source that information out to other websites, like of course FlightAware, uh, Flight uh, Flight Nav 20, Flight Radar 24. Um, there's ADSB Exchange as well as some others. So and again, as you send your information to other websites you also get some bonuses on top of that as well you know as being a uh a ground station and and sending your information over to that but we're not really here to talk about what we talked about last week we are here to talk about the brand new uniden sds 100 this radio is the talk of the town and i just happened to get mine a little early um i guess whatever happened was scanner master sent out their newsletter said they were available i happened to be sitting in front of the computer when it came out I signed up for the scanner right away, made the purchase, and I was very surprised. I was opening a bunch of packages I got from Amazon because I was in the middle of upgrading my recording studio here, uh, at least for my video stuff. I bought um, uh, a, an extra webcam. I bought some extra USB cables. I bought a secondary microphone uh, telescoping mount so that I could really mount the webcam to it. Uh, in hindsight, I probably should have bought a gooseneck, but that'll be the next purchase I guess I make from from Amazon. But um, and I bought a couple other things too here to kind of enhance the podcast itself. But when I'm opening up all these boxes, I'm not really paying attention to what's on the outside. I'm thinking to myself, you know, I placed an order. I, I had quite a bit of stuff in there, but this is a lot of boxes here. Cutting open the boxes, I'm pulling out microphone adapters. I'm pulling out webcams, and all of a sudden, I pull out a Uniden SDS 100, and I gotta say. It got shipped a little bit earlier than I was expecting. I really wasn't expecting to go out until um, June 11th, but I got mine last Wednesday, and that would have put it at um, June 6th. So that was pretty good. So basically what I did was I quickly set up my uh, my video studio here in, in the basement. I jumped on Facebook Live, and we did a live unboxing session uh, for the Facebook audience. And uh, I gave you my real 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 time reaction basically as to what I thought about the scanner you know the first time I'm physically putting my hands on one and uh, what I'm going to continue to do too is you know I'm kind of digesting what the scanner has to offer uh, what some of the features are what's the things I don't like about it what I did was this past Saturday too I also jumped back on Facebook I answered some more questions about the scanner and I will continue to do so uh, as a part of our scanner school Facebook live um, sessions that we try and hold pretty much every Saturday, although I've been pretty lax with that lately, especially with the summer coming along and whatnot. But, uh, you know, the scanner's here, and on top of doing the weekly updates, 
I also have a webpage set up called sds100review.com. Now, sds100review.com is going to be the place where I'm going to be documenting all about the SDS 100. So if you just do a Google search for SDS 100 review or SDS 100 review.com, that'll take you to my page where I am going to be outlining everything inside and out. Yes, inside the scanner, as well as the feel, the way it operates, some of the things I already don't like about it. I'll be documenting on that. And I'm also going to be posting a lot of videos on the scanner on YouTube. So I'm Really hot to get my first 100 visitors on YouTube. And as I go over here to my um, my account, you can follow me along here to go to scannerschool.com slash YouTube. And this will take you over to my brand new YouTube channel. And I'm really in the hunt right now to get my first 100 subscribers. So if you would do me a favor and uh, take a look at uh, some of my, my videos that I'm posting up here. And it looks like right now I've got 89 subscribers. So I'm really close to hitting my 100 mark. So if you guys want to be a part of that, that would be great. I'm really happy that we're almost hitting the limit. So maybe we'll have to up it. You know, maybe we'll have to get for my next 500 subscribers. But uh, it's really cool. I just turned the channel on last um, last month. I only posted one video, but I did post my unboxing video. Uh, it was a copy of Facebook. And I just copied that over to YouTube to try and grab the, some more exposure on it. And it seems to be happening. But also, too, if you go to sds100review.com, I have a mailing list there. And I'll be updating the mailing list, too, on, on um, things I like and don't like about the scanner. So if you forget to check the website, at least sign up for the email list. And in that email list, too, I'll keep updating you what I think about the scanner as I come across them. So let's take a look here. I have uh, Unidin's webpage up. Let's go through what the scanner has to offer. And again, if you're interested in buying the scanner, hold on to the end of the podcast too. So I'm going to tell you where I bought mine from and uh, how you can also get yours. So let's take a quick look at some of the features that Unidin outlines as uh, part of what makes this scanner really, really cool. Why this is quickly becoming my my new favorite scanner. Although I, I you know, it's I've only had it for a week, so I'm gonna I have to wait for that novelty really to wear off before I make my decision as this is my new favorite. But here's the really, really cool thing about it customizable color display okay you can change pretty much everything that is shown on the display you can't change the font you can't change the height of the font right you can't make it from 12 point to 8 point or 16 point font that's just not there uh i i wish it was but it's not but you can change the color so if you want everything to be black and white that's already built into the scanner if you want everything to be white on black that's also built into the scanner. So if you just like those monochromatic displays, perfectly fine, already built in. The way that the radio comes shipped out of the box, it's basically a red, an orange, and a yellow display. Pretty cool that it shows off the way things look, but I've seen photos already of people on other Facebook groups who have gone in there and they've simplified it with the colors. They've gone with a sky blue and a gold, and that's all they have. And let me tell you, that looks hot. I like the display when it's very simple and, and you don't have to look through all the colors. The other nice thing about it, too, is that if you don't want it's like me, I don't care about the function tag. I don't care if it's a uh, fire attack or if it's a police dispatch or if it's aviation or, or hand radio. See, I know from the alpha tag what it already is. It's redundant information on the scanner display. What I'm able to do on the scanner, though, is I can change it from instead of saying fire attack, you can put the unit ID text in there as well if you decide to do that. So instead of it saying, you know, UID 12345, you can alpha tag that and it would say, you know, fire chief or, or uh, EMS 345 or something like that. So for an example here is we have uh, RP25 local county system. Most of the stuff on there is encrypted, but the medical and the fire marshals are not encrypted. So what I did was I had set up another program called... Um, Unitrunker, and we'll talk about Unitrunker in, in further podcasts. Right now, we're just on the SDS 100, and uh, I basically mapped out all the unit IDs that belong to the Medcom Talk Group. So out here, you know, all the police EMS units have two radios, and then the fire departments, and there's something like 90 something departments out here, <laughs> uh, or or 70 something. I, I forget it. The numbers ridiculous for, for my county, right? Every town has its own department and like every department has two or three ambulances in it. But I was able to map out every single ambulance. So now if it says, you know, if Medcom comes up 
and a field unit kicks in and EMS, you know, an ambulance comes on, it'll say on it, you know, Hicksville 929 or 9211 or whatever the unit is for Hicksville. I think it off the top of my head, but you know, it's it's um it tells me who's talking. So you're able to then put that information on the display as well. You can change the backlight color. So if I wanted the record button to show up or the record icon to show up instead of it being white, I have mine show up as being red and it kind of sh- displays on the screen easier for me to see it. You can change where the date goes. You can change where the time goes. You can turn those off. There's two levels of display. There's a very simple display, which gives you nice, bold block colors. And there's a um, a more detailed display, which gives you the RSSI value, which is basically received signal strength, um, the whack in the uh, site ID, system ID. If you really want to know what's going on over the air, that kind of breaks that all down for you. Now, again, we'll talk about this, you know, and, and break it down in detail more on the YouTube videos. So if, again, you go to scannerschool.com slash YouTube and uh, subscribe over there and also sds100review.com. Get on the newsletter over there and we'll keep you up to date as we come across this. Again, this is just a high level review. I'm going to go through a lot of these bullet points pretty quick on the podcast, but we'll um, we'll really dive down into it. If I were to go through each one of these pretty detailed, then we'll never get through this podcast. And you guys will be listening to me talk for a week straight. And nobody really wants that. So they also say this is a trunk tracker X, which I guess means the X is, you know, you had trunk trackers two, three, four, five. Well, this one they just went X because it is an SDR radio and they can bring enhancements to it. So they're not locked into how many trunk systems they can do. But out of the box, right out of the, uh, you know, from the time you, you turn it on, it's already built in with EDAX, LTR, Motorola Type 1, Type 2. It'll do um, P25, Phase 1, and Phase 2, all right? DMR, NXDN, and um, Pro Voice, those are paid-for options on the scanner. So when you're going to shell out for this scanner, you got to remember that you're going to have to pay if you want one of those three um one of those three systems, right? Not even just trunking, but even if you want them for conventional, like if you have NXDN conventional, um, uh, DMR, or, uh, or or actually Pro Voice is strictly right on, on the EDAC system. But in order to decode any of those, you would need to pay for it. Now, in order to pay for it, you've got to have the scanner in hand because you need to go onto myunitin.com. you got to put your serial number and your ESN in. And then when you put your credit card information, it will spit back a, a character to um, character screen to put in. All right, so what else do we have here? It's a home patrol model, which means it has the radio reference database in there. It uses these typical Uniden Sentinel software. So if you're used to using the 436 and 536 and you've already got favorites lists set up for those scanners, boom, you can transplant them right into the SDS-100. So for me to take it out of the box and start playing with it, it was simple because all I had to do was download the latest copy of Sentinel. I um, I made sure I did a firmware upgrade because already there was already a firmware upgrade, which was a man- minor patch to, uh, I think, do the, the way that the talk group IDs were displayed on a DMR system, if I'm not mistaken. And um, I did a, a uh, I had to do a update on the master database. Then what you got to do is just got to change the radio that you're writing to from a 436, 536 to an SDS-100. And that basically just allows you to modify the colors on the screen from using Sentinel. Everything else is pretty much straightforward. It uses all the same quick keys. Um, the, the, the lights will flash on it the same way you already had it set up in your 436 and 536. So to go from one to the other, you basically feel pretty much at home using the SDS-100. Going back again, it is the Home Patrol model, which means you have the whole radio reference database in there. Um it it will whatever, basically whatever's in that database is what will go into the scanner itself. Okay, um, I like to make my own favorites lists up. I don't really like to do the national thing. I, I understand why they did it. You know, you, you basically you just turn it on, you put your zip code in, you say, hey, I want to listen to five miles out. I want to listen to police dispatch, police fire, uh, fire dispatch, those kinds of things. But um, I like to take it to take it to the next level. I'm not a big fan of the zip code easy setup. I understand why they did it. You know, so that somebody who has no idea what's going on in their neighborhood could just take the radio out of the box put it in their, their zip code and just monitor whatever the local traffic is. I kind of get it. But I think if you're going to spend 650 bucks, at least at the time of this recording, on a scanner, you kind of got an idea of what you're going to do with it. However, though, you know, if you're going out and you're traveling with a scanner or if you're, um, you know, you're taking it in the car, again, I guess I could fall into traveling, yeah, you probably would use the zip code selection for easier programming. But as far as the home use, when you're going to be using it most of your time, then, of course, you'd want to set up your own personal favorites list. Now, again, we're going to go through this in YouTube videos. Kind of difficult to go through with them over um, over a podcast. So look for that, again, on the YouTube channel. Um, like typical stuff, you've got the close call features. It ships with an 8-gig micro SD, which, again, I, I wish was a little bit bigger, but it is what it is. 
Um, you have nice soft keys on top. Soft keys basically means that the keys will remap themselves based on what you're doing with the scanner. So if it's in standby mode, basically those three soft keys become your system department and channel. Whereas if you hit function, one becomes a modulation toggle. Uh, I, I believe one becomes an avoid or something like that too. Again, I'm still new to the scanner. I've had it for now for less than a week. You can do temporary avoid by pressing the avoid button, permanent avoid by pressing the avoid button twice. You've got the record and playback buttons right there in the front. Fire a tone out if you decide to use that one. You also have uh, system analysis and discovery. So discovery allows you to find out new uh, talk systems on the system. You can find logical channel numbering on LTR and EDAX. And I may be thinking you could do that on DMR, but I'm not sure in NXDN. But uh, that again, I will be playing around with some of that as well. You can, which is really cool now, you can do RAN and color code decoding on the scanner. It uh, typically does CTCSS, DCS, and NAC. Now, again, if you are unfamiliar with what CTCSS, DCS, and NAC are, I invite you to go take a look uh, at our Scanner School catalog and take a look at Scanner School session number. I'm looking it up here. Session number three. Going back to session number three, scannerschool.com slash session number. Three will take you on to our topics of carry squelch, tone squelch, and digital coded squelch. So what else do we have in here? This works as a weather alert radio. Now, if you've listened to this podcast before, you know how strong I feel about weather alert monitoring and how I feel that a weather alert radio should be thought of as a emergency or a life-saving device. You want to go back and listen to that one. That is... Uh, scannerschool.com slash session 19 where we talked about weather alert monitoring. Now again, a weather alert radio can save your life. If you don't want to pay for the weather alert radio and you've got a couple scanners laying around, I talked to you about how to do that in there. This radio will also work as a weather alert radio in standby mode. Um, you know, my Home Patrol 1, Home Patrol 2s out there will allow you to go into weather alert standby mode when you turn off the radio. These radios here, the SS100 just shuts down. So you have to really dedicated into weather alert mode you do have the advanced dynamic memory you have uh, preemptive trunking priority which basically means that if the trunk system is set up to have a talk group as a priority talk group the scanner can recognize that if you set up that same talk group to be a priority in your scanner now at the time of this recording that seems to only work if the scanner is in um is in hold mode but if the I believe if you're in scanner, if you're scanning it, it doesn't work. Somewhere I saw a video on it that it's not really working the way that people had expected it to work. So if, expect this to be something that happens with a uh, with a future upgrade. All right, so what else do we have on here? We have the typical channel on top, SMA connector, backlit, uh, backlit keypad. You have USB connectivity on the side of it. We'll talk about that in one second. Um, you have, again, the Sentinel software. What's really cool about this, too, is now you have a lithium-ion battery instead of the AA batteries that came on all the previous radios. Really cool because you're supposed to get about eight hours of battery life on it. The early adopters like me got a battery that's a bit weaker, so Uniden will be shipping out batteries to all of us who have an early uh, early radio. Now, again, if you're like me and you got your radio early, go to myuniden.com and register your uh, your scanner on their website so that when the new batteries are available, then you can get updated on the batteries. So that's a real quick down and dirty of the feature list. Now let's me grab my radio. I have it right now sitting here in my left hand. Now I got it in my right hand. Uh, I like to talk with my hand, so I'll be swapping this thing back and forth a little bit. But let me talk about some of the things that I've noticed about the scanner as I first turned it on and, and plugged it in for the first time. Now again, too, I'm going to be going through this in video form as well, which I think the video would be the better way to go through it. But again, I want to talk to you guys about what the scanner can do as well. So we have an SMA antenna on top of it. And what happens with this new design, because it does have, I'm looking at the box here, which is now my left hand. It's uh, what they call rugged weather resistant JS4 construction. Now that means it's pretty much um, dust tight. And um, in order to achieve that, there was a couple of things they had to do to the scanner. And one of them was they put an O-ring on the bottom of the uh, of, of the SMA antenna. And as I unscrew it here, what ends up happening is, is there's the O-ring kind of grabs into the chassis of the scanner. And as you tighten it down, it kind of it kind of grabs onto it. The problem with that is that you cannot easily use an aftermarket SMA uh, rubber duck antenna. 
So if you have your your favorites, and I do have my favorites. One of my favorites is the uh, the Diamond SRH seven seven CA, or um, I misplaced it here. I have my Diamond. My second favorite is my Diamond SRH five nineteen. Really love this antenna, and I'll, I'll link to these in the show notes for scannerschool.com slash session twenty five. But these you cannot use on the scanner. They don't fit inside of the uh, the lip. I guess you could say is where the scanner where the antenna goes. So what you can do to go around it though is you can use the included SMA to BNC adapter that will you know stick the antenna out a little bit more over the top of the radio, but it does allow you to use BNC aftermarket uh, antennas. If you're going to use this on an external antenna, you may just want to use an SMA pigtail to get that into your antenna system as well. I have hooked that up using a, a typical SMA cable and it does work fine. So that is another thing you can do there. The headphone jack that's got a nice rubber covering over it now that kind of springs back into place your uh your side port here for the usb connector there's two usb connectors now there's a usb 1 usb 2 the usb 2 is used for charging and programming and the usb 1 is uh to be determined the battery door is held by a uh, uh, a snapping clip i guess you could say it kind of folds over from the bottom of the radio and clips into the battery door which that prevents basically the battery door from coming off so now it's really nice too if you drop this scanner for any reason you're not going to lose the batteries under your desk and the battery door is not going to fly in off and that's that's a nice thing to do as well the front display on it is really nice it's really sharp i love how cr crisp the display is by changing the way that the screen looks with the colors you can really change it that much further so I'm really not too thrilled the way the keypad is. The keypad is very flat. So on the other radios where each button was kind of its own, it kind of popped out through the plastic of the body. Well, this new uh, new keypad design is basically one piece of plastic that goes over the front of the scanner. And each button is raised up ever so slightly. Uh, it's very easy to roll your fingers over and not know where you are on the keypad. At least that's my experience right now with there's a little nipple that's on the number five key. So at least it tells you, you know, from that where you are. But um, again, it's going to take some time to get used to. And uh, and again, I will have some macro shots on this as well on the website at sds100review.com. The other side of the scanner where the, whole, uh, where the menu and function button is, that one is a major, major improvement from all the other handheld radios that you know has come out beforehand. So they've really done a good job at labeling it. There's uh, a green antenna with radiation pattern on it to tell you it's the function button. I don't know why they didn't make that an F. Uh, and then the menu is three red lines to show you that that's the menu. Now, the difference, again, too, is on the other scanners, if you were to put this in your pocket, if you, you know, typically if you're going to hold the scanner, you're going to rest your thumb on that button. It's just the way that it is. And um, it was very easy on, on all the other scanners to accidentally press the function button. And then when you go ahead and you press the keypad, well, then you're going to press something that you don't want to press. So it does take a little bit more pressure now to push in the function button, to push in the menu button. Uh, it feels like it's actually making a click when you push that button. So if you, again, if you hear it, right, that's the SDS-100. And let's take a look at the other earlier ones. That's the 436. Again, want to go into a little bit more depth when it comes to um, on the video side of this as well. The speaker on it is at the very bottom of it. Looking at it again side by side from the uh, 436, it does look like it could be about the same size, but I haven't yet had enough time to really listen to the scanner in a loud environment, in a quiet environment, take it out uh, you know, outside and just see what I can hear with it. So the jury with me right now is still out as to what I'm hearing out of the speaker. Uh, and again, you know, from the from an earpiece perspective as well and how it sounds when I plug it into something else. But again, all in all, I've had this radio now for less than a week. Um, it is nice. They also did a nice little improvement on the bell clip. Oh, and the other thing about the scanner too, which is really, really an interesting shock, is it came with a wall wart. I have not seen a Uniden USB charging scanner come with a wall wart in quite ever, maybe. <laughs> so maybe, maybe uh, you know, my original Home Patrol um, you know, the, the 346 came with one, uh, you know, something like that. But my 125, the 340, uh, 325 P2, uh, the, um, you know, the 436, no wall warts. So really cool to see that this one did come with a wall wart and the USB cable. So a uh, good thing for you to, then, to give that in as well. But all in all, that is my real quick down and dirty version or review on the, um, on the STS-100. Now, again, 
I'm going to be documenting this. I know I've said it a few times, but go to YouTube, scannerschool.com slash YouTube and sds100review.com is where I'm going to be documenting basically on a weekly basis. I am hoping uh, my things I like about the scanner. I'm going to have some really nice macro shots, some close uh, close shots of the keypad, the texture that's on the body, uh, the threading on the SMA connector, the little bit of white that I can see beneath my screen that I think is a manufacturing defect. So that's something else that's in there that I'll be looking at. That's my um, you know excuse to see what's under the hood of this radio. And, um, you know, I, I invite you to uh, please go to the mailing list there. So now, if after everything I've talked to you, if you're ready to pull the trigger and you want to buy one of these scanners, where can you buy one from? I have been dealing with both Amazon and Scanner Master for quite some time. Now, on this thing, I'm going to lean right now over to Scanner Master. That's where I bought my scanner from. And I went to Scanner Master because uh, there's no tax, basically, if I were to buy it from Scanner Master. Whereas where I live right now, I have to pay the Amazon tax. So on a radio that cost me, you know, 650 bucks. That's quite a bit. Uh, on the flip side, though, I did get free shipping, too. So on the flip side, I also did get free shipping with uh, Scanner Master during a promotion, and I would have gotten free shipping as a Prime member from Amazon. So I have both options available for you if you want to buy the scanner. Now, again, I bought scanners in the past from Amazon. I bought scanners in the past from Scanner Master. I've been doing business with Scanner Master for, geez, as long as I can remember. I think I bought my... Uh, 785 from there, and I've been I've been dealing with them for quite some time. That's not to say I don't deal with other places like uh, Universal Radio. Um, I think I bought a couple from there from my HRO, you know, Ham Radio Outlet. But uh, I like dealing with with the guys over at Scanner Master. In fact, um, they're a group group of guys. When I was doing a charity event many years ago on W2LE.net, they uh, they helped out with my charity event as well. So again, I got quite a good relationship with the guys over at scanner master which is why i feel very comfortable recommending them to you i have never had an issue with them personally and uh, you know it's my personal thought that goes behind what i would i would recommend so if you're interested in buying the sds 100 you can go to scannerschool.com slash sds 100 and from there we'll have a quick you know rundown of the scanner of course we'll also have links over at sds 100 review.com but that's more of the review site the purchasing site again Scanner Master, I'm sorry, would be scannerschool.com slash SDS100. Uh, you don't want to go there. You can always go to scannerschool.com slash support, and there will be links in there to Scanner Master as well. So again, right now, the jury is leaning towards a positive review on the SDS100. I've had it for less than a week. Later on today, I'll be breaking out the camera with the 100 millimeter lens, and uh, we're putting the studio back together and doing some uh, not only some B rolls, but also some uh, some good photos to put in there on sds100review.com and also the YouTube page. So one of the last things I want to get into on the scanner, I, I save this part for last because it's it's a new uh, new term, I guess, when you can see it on packaging when it comes to the scans themselves. It's called IQ. What do they have it? They call it scanner, uh, a true IQ scanner. So the box says it's a true IQ receiver designed for improved digital performances in simulcast areas. Okay. I don't really have an issue with simulcast where I live. So I'm going to have to do a bit of traveling to really compare this side by side. But let's talk about some of the issues. If you go back onto scannerschool.com slash Session 18, we talk about simulcast, what it is, and how to overcome it. Basically, in a nutshell, what simulcast is, is when you have a, a P25 network, basically, is, is really going to you're going to find the biggest issue. And you may really see it compounded when you they go over to P25 Phase 2. But you have multiple uh, transmit sites transmitting the same activity on the same frequency. Okay, It's, it's a simulcast, that's why they call it simulcast, but it's the same thing going out over multiple transmit sites. Now, depending on how far you are from each site or how high it is versus the other ones and whatnot, propagation delays, you may get the signal from one transmitter site slightly out of timing from the other sites. And that causes a real problem when it comes to some of the unit and scanners. And, and, and you know, it's not just a unit and problem, but it, it has... It becomes a problem for these scanners to kind of put the signal back together again, right? Because when you're talking about phase two and you're talking about P25, you're basically looking at a signal that's not 
it's it's digital. So there's a lot more parts and components basically going to it, right? It's not a simple sine wave is basically what I'm saying to you. It's it's a couple of different uh, I'm trying to think of an easy way to say this without really without really getting too in detail with it on a podcast and lose anybody. But if you think of a sine wave, right? If you snap a rope, if you snap a garden hose, you can watch that wave pattern go around. But that's think of that as being an analog sine wave. If you take that same garden hose, you stand up rope, and you twist it in a corkscrew fashion, you notice that the wave kind of follows that up and down pattern, but it also has a vector, right? It's got a top right, a bottom right, top left, and a bottom left corner, right? And those are the different vectors on that. And that's when you can kind of say that there's phases in the transmission. Well, what happens is if you got these two phases that are 90 degrees apart, I know I'm getting a little technical here, but if you start bringing in other simulcast sites that are slightly off sync and out of phase, now all of a sudden the scanner doesn't know which signal it should be looking at. With the IQ technology, basically what's happening here is you have one, you have the I, which is one phase, and you have the Q, which is the second phase. And the IQ scanner can then look at the 3D version of this waveform or the corkscrew and put it back together, which is why the STS-100 is going to have a much better success rate in simulcast and weak signals than previous scanners. That's also why that uh, these cheap SDR dongles can do all this because they're using the computer's hardware to put the IQ back together again. So in a very simple form, that's the IQ. And we'll go into IQ in a much further scanner school podcast somewhere further down the line. Maybe we'll even do a YouTube video on it. Or if you know about IQ and you want to come on the podcast and talk about it, please, I would rather have um, you know an expert in the field come on than just somebody like me who's a hobbyist. All right. So um, again, if you want to be on the podcast, always reach out to me and you can talk to me that way as well. I'm always open to having new guests show up. It's a lot uh, a lot of fun, I think, when we bring on a second person into the podcast. So that's a real quick explanation on what this SDR technology is and what the IQ scanner is in the scanner as well. So guys, I hope that you've enjoyed my really quick run through of the you did in SDS 100. So before we go, I want to uh, remind everybody that we do have a Patreon page, and Patreon is a way to help support the Scanner School project week over week. And I want to welcome our newest Patreon supporter, Kenneth Fowler. Kenneth, thank you for being a Patreon supporter and helping Scanner School with the podcast, with the Facebook uh, you know, live sessions, with the YouTube videos, and everything else that we do that we are bringing with uh, with the education program that we are running right now. And also, we have Mark Beebe. Mark is a continued uh, Patreon supporter. Now, again, if you want to help support the Scanner School project, uh, we call it a project now because there's multi-different things going on here. So we got some video, we got some written tutorials, and we got the podcast. And, um, you know, we will... At certain levels, we do offer incentives. So at the $5 incentive, you get the podcast a little bit early. So instead of waiting until Tuesday, you can get it, you know, basically... Typically, Sundays when I, I finish publishing these. Uh, at the higher level, we would give you some free merchandise. Even higher than that, you would get some uh, uh, some videos that are specific just to the, the Patreon support team. And uh, beyond that, too, you have me on retainer, which means you have a 30-minute session, up to 30 minutes, one time a month. And uh, you've got me on retainer. Ask me one-on-one -on -one, uh, questions about whatever it is that you're working on when it comes to Scanner. So again, I hope that you've enjoyed this podcast. Again, you can always reach out to us. Uh, if you have any suggestions or comments about the podcast, my email address, phil at scannerschool.com. You can always reach us on scannerschool.com and hit contact us. We have a So we have a hotline where you can dial in. If you want to call in, leave us your feedback. Leave us a question. We'll play it back on a podcast. It's in the show notes, but if you want it right now, it's 516-308-2885. We also have a um, speak pipe. So if you go to scannerschool.com slash speak pipe, you can use your smartphone or your computer's uh, microphone to also leave us a voicemail that way as well. So with that, I want to say please join us on Facebook, scannerschool.com slash Facebook. We have a great community that's growing by leaps and bounds daily at scannerschool.com slash Facebook group. We're on Twitter, scannerschool.com slash Twitter. And now we are on YouTube, scannerschool.com slash YouTube. Now, again, I want to ask you another favor. If you can like and review this podcast on iTunes, that would help us out tremendously as well. Scannerschool.com slash iTunes. So I know it was a lot at the end of it, but there's only two websites I really want you to remember right now. SDS 100 Review. Sign up for the email list over there. If you want to purchase a scanner, 
scannerschool.com slash SDS100. And of course, I'll sneak in a third one for bonus, scannerschool.com slash YouTube. So join us again next week. We'll talk about um, something a little bit different, but uh, we'll also be keeping up on the SDS100 uh, documents. So again, thank you so much for joining us on Scanner School. This is a podcast that teaches you everything that you need to know about the scanner radio hobby. My name is Phil Lichtenberger, and we'll catch you again next Tuesday for the next Scanner School podcast, 73. Thanks for listening to the Scanner School podcast. Be sure to visit www.scannerschool.com to access the show notes and bonus content.